please share with me what have you talked about? What have you learned? The five stages of sophistication. What does that mean to you? Yes, this is all the answer. Important changes. Important changes. Important changes. In what way? We need to grow with the market and we need to realize that they build. Yes. Yes. Good. You're not the lead dog. The view is always the same. You're looking at an ass. Okay. You're not the lead dog. The view is always the same. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're not first, you're last. Basically it. Uh, uh, you're not first, you're last, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Can you give us more examples on how to niche down so that you are first? I could, but that, that's a whole different conversation because now it goes into market selection, it goes into your unique selling proposition. That takes me three hours just to do that. Okay. But Basic if you want, I can do one of these workshops you know, next time. You know, I'll be here. So, but that's. W would you be interested in learning that? Yeah, yeah we could do that. You know. Nathan, make a note. Then remind me. Huh? I'll do it. I'll do it. Now it's his job to remind me. So, bug him, don't me. Yes, Daryl. Yes. You agree that you don't have to be first to be first. Yes. In, yes. Now, now that, that that's a that's a fair philosophical statement. Okay. And, and, but what what do you mean by that? Well, Apple wasn't first because the computer pitch made it better. Yes. Yes. So you also don't think you need the best No. No. I, there's so, there are more products, there are more services, there are more entrepreneurs struggling, always aiming to, that's kind of the, 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 the more entrepreneurs are struggling because they have this idea, I gotta make my thing the best in the whole world. Okay? I get all, all the time. Spend years working on this thing. And then guess what? When it's time to get to market, it's already owned by somebody else. Like the other day, I was speaking, and there was a gentleman who was telling, him, telling me about he, he has this gourmet coffee business. I said, good luck. <laughs> and he was telling me how it's going to compete with Starbucks. Yeah. Really good luck. <laughs> OK, I mean, uh, he, might be able to, no, he might be able to do it. But if you give me the choice, I wouldn't have touched it with a 10-foot pole. Okay, I'm just like, that's not, Andre? I just wanted to, uh, to share a, a trick that I saw Ford use, I thought it was brilliant. So they have an ad, several years I read it on TV, and all their ads ended with, only Ford has EcoBoost fuel economy. Mm. Interestingly, they never told you what the fuck it was. They just told you they were the only ones that had it. The new mechanism, right? The yeah. new mechanism. That's what it was, they just told, it, told you that only they had EcoBoost fuel economy. Yeah. Yes. So that's how you create your own category. So we're the only ones that have this. Okay. Period. That's it. There was a. There was a. Uh, uh, let me try to paraphrase the story. I might got it wrong, but the story goes something like this. Many years ago, that was this uh, beer company, and they, it's a. I mean, how many have recognized beer is very, very competitive. Yeah. The alcohol industry. So this guy, this owner, is was struggling to get people to buy his brand, and. Just struggling, and then somehow then he, he hired a very brilliant marketing guy, and the marketing guy was like, "Okay, let's. How can we differentiate? How can we find a new mechanism that makes your beer different?" Because he was keep pushing our uh, beer is smoother, it's better, it's blah 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 blah, right? Right, doing stage one and two shit. By the way, it's really stage five. So what what makes you different? And then the guy was talking, well, you know, our beer, we actually get our water from some spring mountain, and they go through this filter process, and we use this kind of crop, and you use this machine, and, and this machine costs X amount of money, and da, da 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 and he went through the whole process, and the marketing guy was like, this is brilliant. This is awesome. Why don't you, like, tell people about this? Oh, you know, you think, you think I should? Yes. And then, and he did. At the time, they were, at the time, many years ago, we were running a four-page ad, telling people about you know, how they make the beer. How does it work? How does it what? How does it work? And that's why we have this smooth taste, right? How does it work in our beer and this mountain and this water and tell us the whole freaking story. And that sales skyrocketed. What's funny is, here's, what, here's the kicker, 
It turns out every beer company does that. Yeah. <laughs> they, get, they get the same damn water from the same freaking place. They go through the same filtering process, but they're the first one to tell the market, oh, here's what we do. Okay? And that's an advantage. So it goes back to if you're not communicating what makes you unique in your marketing message, nobody knows. And that's why sometimes you kind of have to toot your own horn. Not just toot your horn and say me, 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 but articulate, here's why we are special. Here's what we believe in. Here's what we stand for. Here's how we do what we do. Here's why we can do what we do. Yes, Ali. No, it's your market. How many can see it's the market? It's not your company, it's, it's the market. You look at stages in the market sophistication, not, not your company. Not, I'm not talking the growth, you know, startup, growth, mature, I'm not talking, it's not that kind of chart. Yes, Nathan? How do you determine uh, where the market is? It's pretty obvious. You just look how much? It's pretty obvious. Okay. You look at this, you pretty much, you give me any market, you will know. Like Starbucks. You will know, yeah, you will know. Yeah, and how many coffee shops are out there? And that's why they have a difficult time. Uh, it's, imagine Starbucks when, when, if you read his book, pour your heart into it. How many have heard of that book? Yeah. You guys need to read the book. Okay, write this down. Books you don't read don't help you. Okay. Books you don't read don't help you. Starbucks, pour your heart into it. Written by the founder. You can see at the time when he was trying to raise capital, Howard, what, you know, imagine, imagine you have a chance. Go back many years, you have a chance to invest in Starbucks. This guy comes to you and says, you know what, I'm going to sell coffee. Not only am I going to sell coffee, I'm going to sell it at two or three times more what everybody sells for. And I'm going to have it, I'm going to call it weird names. And I'm not going to have like small, medium, large. I'm going to call it Grindale. <laughs> they can't even pronounce the name. And I'm going to open up these chains worldwide. Would you want to invest in my company? No. You know what I mean? It, it's, it's ridiculous. But he sees his vision. And if you actually read the book, Howard's vision wasn't to build the best coffee shop. You read his mission statement. You read what he does. He's talking about building a third place for people. The place from home, you have home, you have work. This is the place, the third place for people. That's what he wants to create. Happens to sell coffee. That's what he wants to build. Not coffee. Not co he wasn't trying to make a better coffee. The coffee's okay, I mean, but he, that's what, that wasn't what his vision was. Very interesting. 10 times your finances, 10 times your business, 10 times your marketing, 10 times your life. Hit the subscribe button now.